Okay, so I painted the tan on the underbelly of the fuselage and also the um, the floats or stabilizers, whatever they're called. So I'm pretty happy with how smooth that uh, that came out. There is a slight hint of a seam in this middle section here, but uh, I don't think that's anything to worry about. So um, yeah, all looking good so far. So the next step is for me to mask this off. Now this is a bit of an experimentation just because it did come with decals but I kind of find working with large decals can be problematic and if you stuff them up you know you're going to end up painting it anyway so normally in this situation I'll paint first. The exception to that is the decals that are going on the tail and also on the wing I'll be using the decals I've decided not to paint those because they're pretty straightforward nice flat surfaces so shouldn't be any problems there. So for masking this off, I'm going to try a method I haven't used before, and it's a method that I picked up from my skateboarding days back in the 90s when applying grip tape to a skateboard deck. So the grip tape, uh, the stuff you're standing on that gives you grip when you're skating, uh, comes in big sheets, big self-adhesive sheets, and you basically stick it down on the deck and then you use a, a file or a rasp to um, clean off the uh, the edge, the uh, the excess uh, grip tape. So I'm going to actually try this method here, and I've done a little bit of experimentation off screen just with the uh, the flotation tanks, and it appears to have worked. I mean, the the proof will actually be once I uh, paint the red and see the delineation of the line. But given that these are actually fairly simplistic shapes. And we've got a nice hard edge to follow I think that this technique will probably work well so I'm going to share this one with you so of course I'm just using uh, Tamiya tape this stuff is brilliant for masking and what I'm going to do is just one on the edge uh, so it's not quite long enough but that's all right now I'm just going to burnish it down just using you know, a cotton bud. And this nice hard edge that we're going to find here, is, we're going to use that to our advantage. So what I have here is a round file and it's quite, um, it's not coarse. It's, um, yeah, just a jeweler's file, but um, you know, uh, a round one I've found works best. And what you do is just simply rub it along the edge, just gently. You don't have to go too hard, you're just wearing away the paper of the tape, gently. And we're just doing it on an angle, so that we're catching that line. And remember, you're not sort of filing away at the model, just at the tape. And after a while, you start to see a line appear where the tape is. Uh, sorry, where the edge of the model is. So you start to see, just on that edge, it's starting to uh, starting to break away. If you want to get right up to the right up to the edge. Now you do have to be careful with this paper, uh, with this tape, because it does, when it tears, it doesn't tear necessarily in a, sh in a sort of sharp line. So that's why I'm running the file this way and not sort of um, back and forth. Because if you do it back and forth, you will tend to find that you'll get, um, you'll get a bit of tearing. So at least this way, we are just keeping the file on that edge. And I mean, the other method, of course, is to use the uh, use the decals as a template for cutting cutting masks. You can do that as well. So, it's, or you can just you know mask by hand, which is what I usually do, where you cut out small bits of tape and just line it to the edge. But I want to see how well this works because I've got a I've got maybe a few other kits where I might be able to use this method on. So this will be an experimentation. All right, now, if we have a look, 
can see that tape you can see we're starting to send into the uh, the kit itself so that's the time to start sort of looking at how we go and I'm simply going to start at the edge I'm just going to pull away gently because there might be some areas where it hasn't actually caught and that's looking pretty good there we go look at that came right off now there may be a little bit of a, a fuzzy edge there and you can go in with just a sanding stick and what you want to do is you want to sand away from the tape so basically it's helping to press the tape down on the edge so I'm just lightly sanding it and what that should do is give us a really clean masking edge yeah, it's a little bit tricky down the end here. But, that's pretty good. And that's a hell of a lot easier than cutting it out with a knife or tracing over a, uh, you know, tracing over a decal. So, there you go. Who would have thought that uh, my skateboarding days would have made their way into modelling? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll do the rest of this off camera and then I'll come back and um, uh, show you the um, masked pieces. Okay, so masking is done. I've got a nice clean edge around, although I won't know until I've actually thrown a coat of paint on. What I'll be doing is I'll be putting a coat of tan just along the edges, uh, just so that if there are any sort of gaps there that they are um, filled up with tan so that when I run the red over um, I'm not going to run into any problems. The one issue that I think I will have and it's probably going to be at the front because it's not a hard shape, um, a hard edge so that might come up a bit messy, it might need a bit of a touch up. I apologize if you've actually used this method before and I just haven't seen it on YouTube but like I said, it's a method that I used <clears throat> for putting grip tape on skateboards. So that's where that's uh, where I sort of uh, got it from. But I'm sure I'm not the first person to apply that for masking models. So all these pieces are done now. I've got the, uh, the two floats done. And same thing, I will run a bit of tan just along the edges. And so then I can do the, uh, the red. So the next step for me is to do the red, the primer and the red on the uh, top of the fuselage and also the, the tanks. And um, yeah, I'll uh, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've put the red on the fuselage and so here we can see my masking with the tan that I did. So I'm going to take the masking off and uh, see how, how well it worked out. So it can, either, it can either be incredibly satisfying to pull the masking off or incredibly disappointing. <laughs> um, especially if it ends up being musical chairs and all over the place. So we'll see how this works. I'm also interested just to see how the tan works next to the red. I think it should, um, it should be okay. And pulling this off gently. It is a lack of paint so I'm not expecting any paint to peel off but you can see that actually hasn't come up too bad I quite uh, yeah quite like that color that's good seems the masking so far so good need to just be careful when you're taking the masking off that you're not scratching the paint Okay, that's worked pretty well indeed. I think I've got just the tiniest bit of bleed here in this corner. Let's see if we can bring that in. Probably not going to focus on me. It's pretty minimal. I reckon just a dab the tan will fix it. But it looks like the process I used for masking worked 
pretty well. Um, I haven't got any of the tan sort of down the edge. Um, I do like that color combination. I think it looks good. I've also done the the floats as well, but I'm not going to pull a masking off these until I've got them attached to the wing. And I may just need to do a bit of a touch up with um, the airbrush on the red once I connect it. So um, I'm going to leave these on, leave the masking on for those. I've also painted the uh, the little hatch part of the fuselage for where Fio sits and I have also painted the edges of the um, uh, windscreen the windows I'm just bring those out I didn't film these uh, masking these because they were so tiny look, uh, look at that it's just minuscule so masking that was a bit of a nightmare it didn't come up too bad though so I'm pretty happy with that um, I literally just laid the tape down and cut around the edge uh, where Paul Carosso sits uh, it's it's a little bit rougher but I, I don't think anyone's gonna notice when they uh, when they look at it so those those two pieces are done they'll be probably the last things I put on the fuselage because I'll need to do you know whether I do a, a flat coat or a you know, semi-gloss coat. So the next step I'm going to do is put the decals on the tail here. So it's made up of uh, two decals that go on the tail. You've got the white and the green. And then you have this little R logo thing um, that goes, I believe on the white, yeah, in the middle of the white area. So whenever you're doing decals over decals, you want to make sure you've got that first decal down properly and has been given enough time to you know sink in and, and all that sort of thing so what I'll be doing is just the white and the green parts on the tail and I'll do the logos um, a bit later on just once I know the uh, the underlying decals are set in place and then after that it will be a matter of putting a gloss varnish so let's start with this decal I'm going to drop it in the water and just give it a few minutes to, uh, to soak I have no idea what these decals are like. I'm sure they'll be fine. A bit of white towel. Uh, sorry, a bit of paper towel. Uh, get a couple of cotton buds ready. And a toothpick for moving it around. So I just need something to set it up on. I think that will do perfectly. So uh, just give it a couple of minutes. Now I haven't put a gloss coat down, um, I'm just going to do the decals over the painted surface. Um, I don't think I, I don't expect any problems there. The only problems I've had is doing panel lining straight over the SMS paints. So I usually do a, a gloss coat uh, if I'm doing panel line wash. Okay, so soak the decal, it looks like it's starting to move. So I'm just going to dab the excess water off. Actually, I need some decal solutions. Okay, so I'm going to use um, Microset just to uh, make sure the, the decal adheres and sucks down onto the surface really well. Gonna get this decal in the right orientation. Yep, seems to be sliding off. Okay. And I think there's a slight edge of carrier film, which is giving me grief. See how they're sitting there. Yeah, there's a faint. You can see that uh, carrier film over the 
the edge of the green there so I'm, I'm gonna have to either trim it or I don't know whether the um, microsol will help to sort that out anyway first of all let's just gently roll it oh gently gently and of course now I'm getting into territory where I could actually uh, tear decal so what you want to do is make sure it's good and wet and it's sliding around because if any part of it has adhered to the surface you will get a tear especially with lower quality decals I mean these ones um, are working a treat to be perfectly honest very happy with the way these are going down just want to nudge it just a little bit I reckon I may have to, once that's better down, I may have to sand the top of it just a fraction. Maybe I should have painted it. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, I can take the decal off. And then I'll actually, uh, yeah, paint it. Okay. I think there's a point where you can only play with it so much. So, what I'm going to do is put some Microsol on it see if we can get it to bed down a bit better there are a, a series of panel lines in there I'm sort of starting by putting it around the edges of the decal because that's where it's going to draw it underneath and a bit on the top and flip it over I'm going to try and Catch these edges around here. Alright, so I'm going to leave that for a bit. And basically continue through the process of doing all the decals. Uh, then I'll give it a gloss coat ready for the panel lines. So I've given the fuselage a gloss coat. It's not a perfect gloss coat, but it's functional just for putting in some panel lines. So I'm going to use a combination, uh, it's a bit of an experiment to see how I go. For the lighter tan areas, I'm going to use panel line accent color brown. And then for the red areas, rather than use black, I'm going to try this dark brown. So hopefully it's not as stark as just using black so we'll see how it goes i'll start on the, uh, the tan areas first give it a good shake i'm going to wipe off all the excess off the brush and then we'll see how good these um how good these rescribed panel lines are so if we get this nice and close to the camera Yeah, that seems to be wicking really well. You see that zoom across. Yeah, so those rescribed panel lines seem to have worked really well. It's going to be sort of minimal cleanup just on the edges there where I've dabbed it in. But I reckon that'll look uh, that'll look all right. So for the red parts, I'm going to try this dark brown. See how that goes. Again, give it a really good shake. Get rid of all the excess and just touch it to the panel lines. Yeah, I reckon that'll be good. I reckon that'll be uh, just fine. A bit hard to see with the light on it, but it's um, it's nowhere near as obvious as if I went with a black. 
Like it's still there, but it's it's subtle enough. So yeah, it looks like the rescribing I did is uh, made made a big difference. Big difference. Yeah, it's coming pretty well. I'm literally just dabbing it into a corner and watching where the capillary action takes it. So it'll go to a particular point and then just go to the next area and repeat the process. Yep, I reckon that's pretty good. Very happy with that. I was quite concerned that the panel line, you know, some of the panel lines are really soft on this kit, so I'm really glad I did some some rescribing. I think it's um, it's made a, a big big difference to this particular part of the, uh, the project. All right, now we've got the machine guns at the front here, and I think for those. So you can see them right there. I'm going to actually use black because it would make sense that they've probably got a bit of, um, I don't know, a bit of heat scorching or whatever it is. Um, so I might use black just for those particular, those particular bits. But maybe we'll see how contrast, how different the contrast is compared to the brown that I used on the rest of it. A bit more of a mess here. Yeah. That's all right. Good thing about this stuff is it comes off. to really wait for that to dry before I can attack it with some um, with some shellite as I usually do now those panel lines they will probably become maybe a little bit a bit more obvious once I give it a um, I've decided I'm going to give it a matte coat it would make sense that this would be a somewhat shiny plane um, but I think at this scale, again, it's that kind of thing of the smaller the object is, the less likely you are to, or the less realistic a high gloss is. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, put a matte coat over it, I think. While I'm here, I am going to check the state of the cockpit. So I'm going to take my tape off. It should be all right. There shouldn't be anything underneath. But I need to see... I'm going to go about painting the uh, the edge of the cockpit. All right, so we can see. Yeah, I need to do a bit of a bit of painting around that edge. There we go, and I'll just take some brown or something around that, but. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it obviously has I masked it okay because I haven't got any um, any red showing through there. And then where Vio sits, I'll take this out. And of course I've got a little hatch that goes in that place there, but I'll, um, I'm going to matte varnish this and then stick the little windscreen on before I put that, drop that in place. And also um, I won't put the windscreen where Porco Rosso sits um, until I've matte coated the, uh, the fuselage. But um, yeah, fuselage is um, look pretty good. I'm ready to go, I think. I'm just going to put the tiniest little bit of panel line on the um, what I think is used for detecting the speed 
little instrument on the side of the fuselage. So I'm just going to use black just on this. It's literally just going to be on the uh, little propeller here. Doesn't need more than just a couple of little dabs, that's it. I don't know if I actually need any panel lines sort of on the tail there. You can see those um, those decals bedded down absolutely beautifully. I put about three or four coats of the microsole on it and um, it just made a massive difference. Beautiful decals, they're nice and thin but they're actually quite hardy as well. I didn't have any tearing whatsoever and I was concerned about the edge uh, it's going to be really hard to see on the screen, but the edge where I wasn't going to, you know, there was sort of going to be a hint of red, um, but I managed to sort of fold it over a little bit on the edges and it just was sublime. So um, thank you Fine Moulds for uh, providing this kit with um, fantastic decals. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I will come back once I have done a round the cockpit, painted that up and um, cleaned up the panel lines. You've seen me do that before. I just use um, shellite, um, but you can use enamel thinner. Do the same thing just with a bit of cotton bud. And um, yeah, I'll come back after I've sort of matte coated that and show you what it's like before we move on to the wing and the engine and all the other details. Okay, so a bit of an update on where I'm at with the fuselage. I have of course finished all the panel lines and given it a bit of a flat coat. It's actually come up more of a satin which uh, is fine. Um, the panel lining has come up pretty well. It's maybe a bit too stark for my liking but it's not too bad. Um, you can see in the cockpit and the cockpit detail, I've just painted NATO black around the edge of the cockpit um, hole there. And I've also done the same for uh, Theo's little hatch. So it's just been given a flat coat. The next thing for me to do is to attach the very fiddly small windscreen. Um, and also uh, this piece here which goes, I've got these three pieces here, we get them in shot, these three pieces I've got to, um, I've got to attach and I'm going to do that off camera because there's no way I'm going to be able to do that um, uh, with the camera close enough without bumping the camera and what have you. So I'll do that off camera and show you what it looks like then. I have started on all the other elements, um, but that will probably be in the next video. So um, yeah, we'll take from there. Okay, so apart from the figures, the fuselage is finished, ready to go. Now I put on the windscreen and I believe that's the machine gun sight. And if you probably notice the machine gun sight is a little bit crooked. And the reason for that is there's a hole in the uh, windscreen and the windscreen, I accidentally took the locating pin off. So I'm gonna in focus. So there's a locating pin at the front of the uh, windscreen and I of course filed that off. So um, if you're building this, just make sure you don't because that will help you locate the, um, the windscreen in the, uh, the exact center. So um, that's a little bit of a blue on my behalf. As far as gluing the little windscreens, I used this stuff, which is the Tester's um, Clear Part Cement and Window Maker. I love this stuff, this stuff is great. So essentially it's um, a really, I guess, uh, thinned down version of what we call in Australia PVA or Elmer's glue in the States. But it's white glue that's um, really quite watery. And the good thing about it is it doesn't cloud up your um, clear parts at all. The problem is though, it does 
well, it's not so much a problem, but in this case it was, um, it does dry glossy. So I had a little bit of, um, a little bit of over oh, glue splurge out when I did the front bit, if I get it to focus. There we go. So at the front of that small windscreen, there's a little bit of a mark there because I uh, messed up a little bit with the testers glue. And what I did was I brush painted a bit of matte over the top of it. So it's reduced the glare of that mark a lot more. And um, yeah, it just helped to sort of cover up that glossy, um, glossy bit where the glue dried. So I'm calling the fuselage done. This um, front section, the it does actually come off. It'll be very gentle. So I can still put um, seat Theo in there before I put the, the hatch on it. And it sits in there pretty snugly, this little piece here. So I'm not gonna worry about gluing it. I'm gonna basically put the figure in, and drop that um, panel down, it's not going anywhere. So the next step is for me to do all the other bits and pieces. So predominantly the wing, attach the floats and the motor of the engine. And then of course all the ancillary pieces like the figures and the, the cart. So that'll be in the next video. See you then.